Hi, this is Dr. Ruscio, and today let's talk about anxiety, depression, and other associated mood disorders. These are one of the most common things that I see in practice, and every day I'm frustrated seeing how readily different forms of antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications are being dispensed, and very little is being done to ask a question, why is this person depressed, anxious, or have other mood disorders in the first place? And if one really has a strong look at the medical literature, it becomes fairly evident that there are five main causes of most neuropsychiatric imbalances. They are toxicity, hormonal, inflammatory, nutrient deficiencies, and uh, traumatic injuries to the brain. So let's take a moment and talk about each one of these. Um, and by addressing each one of these, it is possible to ameliorate the cause of most cases of anxiety, depression, um, and, and, and other mood associated disorders. Of course, it's not going to work for everybody, for, but for many people, um, it will. And we readily will see people get off of one, two, three, four antidepressants over the course of a few months by addressing these causative factors. So it has been well published, and especially the researcher, the PhD researcher named Michael Mays, has published a very compelling airtight case showing the association between inflammation and disruptions in brain chemistry. Um, so if anyone has inflammation, whether it be from um, foods that don't agree with them or deficiencies in omega-3 fatty acids, inflammation is certainly something that should be addressed in anyone with any kind of uh, mood disorder. Also, it's been very well published that different toxicities, especially lead and arsenic, have been associated with different mood disorders. Um, part of the reason why is because a lot of these metals tend to accumulate in the brain and in brain tissue and cause a malfunction in, uh, in how the brain functions, essentially. Uh, the third, and also very important, but often overlooked, is hormones. There's a very strong connection between hormones and brain chemistry. In fact, uh, with the different speaking I do on female hormones, I uh, oftentimes try to uh, tie together for, for the audience that estrogen and progesterone have a very strong impact on serotonin, dopamine, and GABA. In fact, they act on many of the same pathways uh, that medications do. Um, so it's, it's very important that someone look at their, their hormone levels um, and try to correct those before going on an antidepressant. Uh, and then there's also the issue of nutrient deficiencies. We know that serotonin and dopamine are both made directly from amino acids. Um, so if your diet is deficient in protein or amino acids, you run that risk. And also, that certain, especially B vitamins, are phenomenally important in allowing these neurotransmitters to be made. And then there's also the issue of um, head trauma. If someone's had prior head trauma, that can cause a disruption in, in how the brain and how the brain operates. So um, these are just a, a, a few of the things that are really commonly overlooked, but very very important to look at inflammation hormones, toxins, nutrient deficiencies, and prior head trauma. And these are all things that can be treated. These causes can be treated, thus allowing the brain chemistry to balance itself back out and someone to function normally without the need of any kind of medication. So if you're someone who's on an antidepressant or thinking about going on it, I would strongly encourage you to look into the causative factor as to why you have depression. And when you treat that, when you treat the cause, you oftentimes will have a side benefit rather than the side effect. This is Dr. Ruscio with today's health tip. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks.